Right off the bat, Gigabyte has come out with not one, not two, but rather four GTX 1060 models. The lineup consists of the G1 Gaming 6G, G1 Gaming D5 6G, WinForce OC, and the tiny little Mini ITX OC, which is a product I hope to look at in the near future. At just 170mm long, it might be 12% longer than the Nano, but it's also considerably cheaper. Anyway, on hand today is the flagship G1 Gaming 6G model, which features all the bells and whistles of a typical G1 gaming card. Typically, the highest tier Gigabyte cards are part of the Extreme Gaming family, but at this stage we haven't heard of a GTX 1060 model so that may or may not be in the works. The previous generation Maxwell cards did feature an Extreme Gaming GTX 960 and GTX 950, so there's every likelihood that we'll see a 1060 model at some point. While the GTX 1080 and GTX 1070 G1 gaming models feature a trio of 90mm fans, the GTX 1060 version has been downgraded to a pair of 90mm fans. Of course, the 1060 is only a 120W TDP rated part, so the WinForce 2X cooling system should more than suffice. The WinForce 2X employs a little bit of gigabyte trickery seen on the previous models as well as the higher end extreme gaming. The same alternating fan design spins into action to reduce air turbulence which maximises heat dissipation and helps to minimise noise output too. Also the same unique blade fan feature is present and Gigabyte claims the 3D stripe curve on the fan surface improves airflow by 23% over traditional fans. Unfortunately I'm going to have to take them at their word since my wind tunnel has currently been rented out to Red Bull's F1 team. Go Ricardo! Helping direct the airflow generated by the fans is a black plastic fan shroud that encases the graphics card. Along the leading edge of the G1 gaming are some RGB LED backlit features such as the Gigabyte logo and the fan stop label. The fan stop feature means that the fans have the ability to start and stop dynamically as needed. On the front side we see some orange accents which I guess look cool if you're featuring orange in your build. On the back side, a stylish metal backplate extends the entire length of the card. Speaking of which, the GTX 1060 G1 Gaming measures 275mm long. Whipping off the cooler, we find two fairly large heatsinks that are connected via a pair of 6mm copper heat pipes. These are composite heat pipes which Gigabyte says boast 29% greater cooling capacity over regular heat pipes. The heatsink which comes in contact with the GTX 1060 GPU features heat pipe direct touch which is designed to maximise heat extraction from this hotspot. With the cooler off, we also get our first look at the PCB, and there are some noteworthy upgrades here. The standard 3 plus 1 power phase design of the Founders Edition has been upgraded to 6 plus 1, and helping to take advantage of the upgraded power delivery is an 8-pin PCIe power connector, capable of delivering 150 watts alone. Out of the box, the GTX 1060 G1 Gaming operates at a base clock of 1594 MHz, with a boost of 1809 MHz. Apparently Gigabyte does cherry pick the GPU dies that make their way into the G1 gaming models thanks to the company's GPU gauntlet sorting technology. So you should be guaranteed to win the silicon lottery, to a degree anyway. At the I.O. end of the G1 gaming we find a pretty standard layout featuring a single dueling DVI output, HDMI 2.0b and three DisplayPort 1.4 outputs. This means 4 monitor multiview is supportive for those of you who like to get down swordfish style. Using Gigabyte's Extreme Engine software utility, gamers can boost the G1 gaming to a core clock of 1620MHz, resulting in a boost clock of 1847MHz at the click of a button when selecting the OC mode. For those of you wanting to overclock the GTX 1060 G1 gaming, the software enables easy overclocking and allows the user to increase the thermal target as well as the power target. The user can monitor the GPU's vitals and easy overclocking modes exist, along with the more complex manual overclocking options. Voltage states can be adjusted and custom fan curves can also be created. Finally, the all important RGB lighting can be configured here and there's a few of the more standard effects to play with. When it came to overclocking, we were able to increase the memory speed by 293 MHz resulting in a total frequency of 2295 MHz. The core was pushed to a base clock of 1750 MHz with a boost clock speed of 1965 MHz. Of course, due to Nvidia's GPU Boost 3.0, we know the card can run faster than the suggested boost clock if kept under the thermal and power targets. In the case of the G1 Gaming, this allowed the card to hold an operating frequency of around 2.1 GHz after a 20 minute stress test, which is a good result. So with all that said, let's jump to the benchmarks and see how it performed. First up, we have Battlefield 4, and out of the box, the GTX 1060 G1 Gaming is just 3% faster than the Founders Edition, and it also matched the Palette Super Jetstream. Custom overclocking the G1 Gaming resulted in an average frame rate of 73 FPS, which was a decent 9% boost over the factory overclock. This time, we see a performance boost of 11% over the factory overclock when testing with Far Cry Primal. That's a pretty good result, though it did mean that out of the box and custom overclock, the G1 Gaming only matched the Super Jetstream. We find much the same when testing with Star Wars Battlefront. 
Through overclocking, we're able to extract 10% more performance, making the G1 Gaming 12% faster than the stock Founders Edition. The overclocking gains in the division weren't as strong as we've seen previously. This time our custom overclock improved performance by 8% to 52 FPS. Like the Super Jet Stream, we find the G1 Gaming does consume slightly more power than Nvidia's Founders Edition. Still, a total system draw of just 207 watts is extremely good given the resulting performance. Overclocked, the total system draw increased by just 6%, which is great, given we often saw gains of around 10%. Now for the operating temperatures. The G1 Gaming matched the Founders Edition with a load temperature of just 64 degrees, which is quite a bit better than the 70 degrees the Super Jetstream runs at. Overclocking, the G1 Gaming only saw thermals increase by 2 degrees, which is still cooler than the pallet card running at its factory overclock. To put those temperature results into context, here are a few recordings of how these various graphics cards sounded under full load and at idle. The G1 Gaming is a nice upgrade over the Founders Edition for those that don't require a blower style cooler, which I assume is a good many of you. The revised PCB design and upgraded power input mean you aren't in danger of overdrawing from the PCI Express slot when overclocking. The beefy cooler also allows the G1 Gaming to stay cool and quiet even when operating at over 2GHz. When compared to the Palette GTX 1060 Super Jetstream, the G1 Gaming does run cooler, but that's about it. The custom overclocking performance is about the same, and the operating volume is also very similar. Gigabyte certainly has the better cooler, so for me, this just gets their card over the line. Price-wise, it's still difficult to accurately gauge where these cards are coming in. The model reviewed here is currently selling for $290 US dollars or $500 Aussie, which is a bit rich. That said, the GTX 1060 D5 6G version of this card is priced at 250 US, though it's currently out of stock everywhere I looked. Realistically, I don't suggest spending much more than 250 US or 450 AU on a GTX 1060 graphics card. Much beyond that, the cost per frame becomes way too high. Overall, the Gigabyte GTX 1060 G1 Gaming is a nice 1060 graphics card that delivers on all fronts. Having been impressed with this Gigabyte 1060, I'm very keen to check out the Compact ITX version, so hopefully I can get my hands on that one soon. Thanks for joining me for another graphics card review and benchmark. What do you guys think of the 1060 G1 Gaming? Let me know in the comments. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.